Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to the building of the Hoover Dam. Now this I've been wanting to watch for quite some time. This is something I could watch in my spare time because the Hoover Dam is a marvel of engineering. It is an absolutely enormous construction and to think that it was made over a hundred years ago or something like that, like a hundred years you know, with the technology that they had back then, it just makes it even more impressive. But I don't really understand how they did it, to be honest. So this video here, I'm hoping it's going to explain that to me. So let's do it. Crazy, look how big it is. On its completion in 1936, this was the largest concrete structure ever built. Wow. The incredible feat of engineering played a critical role in the development of the American Southwest during the early 20th century, providing flood management, hydroelectric power, and securing a reliable source of water for millions. This is how the Hoover Dam was built. Mm. With plans around since 1900 to harness the power of the mighty Colorado River, it wasn't until 1928 that the United States Congress authorized the project and initial surveying began. With the onset of the Great Depression just a year later, the project was seen as a way for the government to provide much needed jobs, jobs in the American I Southwest, see. which had been experiencing a population boom prior to the stock market crash. Mm. Located 26 miles southwest of Las Vegas, on the Nevada-Arizona border, the project required a vast number of workers and their families to relocate. Wow, and so this, is this like, almost like a makeshift town that they made for the workers? Like, this is just in the middle of a desert right here, it's crazy. An entire new town was established. Owned and run by the government, Boulder City was to be a model for the rest of the country to follow in the dark times of the Depression. To drive the project's progress, President Hoover ordered construction of the dam to start in May 1931, before the necessary infrastructure at Boulder City was in place, wow. and many workers lived in temporary tents in what became dubbed Ragtown. To escape the harsh living conditions, many workers began to frequent the then small outpost of Las Vegas, driving significant growth and earning it a reputation for gambling and adult entertainment. Interesting. So an unintended consequence of the Hoover Dam was Las Vegas. <laughs> that is just incredible, you know. It's, it's just interesting how that domino effect, that butterfly effect, the, you know, can just cause like things, like huge things now that we know that Las Vegas is the gambling capital of the world. It would not be there if not for the construction of a hydroelectric dam. You know, isn't that so random, but so cool? Though living conditions were poor, work began on diverting the Colorado River so that the dam could be constructed on the dry riverbed. To divert the water flow, Four 56-foot, 17-metre-wide diversion tunnels, two on each side of the river, were bored through the canyon using nothing more than dynamite, followed by workers using pneumatic jackhammers. Gosh, that must have been hard work. Hard work, physical. Excavated rock was then dumped into the Colorado River, creating a coffer dam that forced water to flow through the newly constructed tunnels. A second coffer dam downstream prevented water flowing back into the construction site and formed an area that could be pumped dry, exposing the riverbed. The Hoover Dam employs a gravity arch design and is held in place by the weight of its concrete together with the pressure of the water it holds forcing it into the canyon floor and walls. Such a print. Look at this, you know, you've got to imagine that very little safety harnesses are being used by this gentleman here. I, I see one rope, one. 
practical required the canyon surfaces to be smoothed as one of the first activities to prevent leaks. It was during this phase of the project that the first hard hats began to be used. Workers dipped their hats in tar and let it harden, protecting them, at least to some extent, from falling debris. Seeing their success, the project's leaders quickly ordered thousands of these hats and mandated their use by the workers. Gosh, how many people, like, you know, I'm, I imagine this project, a project of this size, people had to have died in, in the construction. You know, they're using TNT to, to create the, the, the void, the space, you know. Yeah, I, I imagine people must have died. In 1933, some 18 months ahead of schedule, the first concrete pours began on the dam. As concrete gives off heat and contracts as it cures, a project on the scale of the Hoover Dam would have taken more than 125 years to harden if poured in a single continuous pour, and structural weaknesses would have caused the dam to crack under its own weight. Instead, the site was divided into a series of rectangular moulds, some as large as 50 square feet or 15 square metres in size really great ingenuity for the time you know considering this was almost a hundred years old just really really good problem solving skills on display here these molds were fitted with a series of steel pipes that carried river water through them allowing the concrete to cool and harden much faster than if it was left to do so alone in the heat of the desert once the concrete had hardened and stopped contracting the pipes and hairline cracks between neighbouring blocks were filled in with grout and a new layer of moulds was placed on top. This process was repeated time and again to build the dam walls. It's so big! As the dam steadily rose, getting the concrete to where it had to go before it began to harden started to pose a significant challenge. To overcome this, an ingenious system of overhead cables that carried buckets of concrete from specially built concrete plants on the Nevada side of the dam to the required location on the construction site was used. In total, 87.5 million cubic feet of concrete Whoa. and some 582 miles of cooling pipes were used in the construction of the dam. Wow, 87 million! <sighs> This project must have been expensive, especially during the Great Depression. I would imagine if not for the depression creating the demand for employment, the construction of this thing would have been a lot more expensive because you have to pay the workers a higher wage to attract them to the area, to attract them to the, the physical arduous work. Yeah, really impressive project, man. The scale of this thing. By 1935, two years ahead of schedule, the 726-foot-high dam was complete and the river diversion tunnels were sealed shut, allowing the Colorado to begin flooding the canyon behind the structure and creating the reservoir we know today as Lake Mead. Fit-out of the adjacent power plant and its associated infrastructure took place in parallel with construction of the main structure and the dam began generating electricity at the end of 1936. Today, this remarkable infrastructure project has an average output of 4.2 billion kilowatt hours Whoa. and provides water and electricity to millions, millions yeah. across the southwestern United States. I was going to say. An economic catalyst to an entire region of North America and a powerful example of the impact that our industry can have. That is a ton of electricity, man. God. If you enjoyed this video and would like to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the B1M. Well done. I am thoroughly impressed by the construction of that dam, you know, considering the time, the limited technology relative to what we have today, you know, it just shows you what people, when they come together, can do, you know. I would have loved to, like, understand, like, ha I'm sure this project wasn't undertaken without casualties, man, because 
I'm sure like they're dealing with TNT, you know, at a time where health and safety were an afterthought, but still an amazing project. Well done to the B1M for producing a fantastic video as well. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.